Hello and welcome. My name is Leslie Stearns. I'm a talent development facilitator here at Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area. And I am pleased to bring you this workshop entitled Effective Resumes. The objectives we're gonna cover, we're gonna determine how to write and customize a resume that reinforces your qualifications each and every time you apply to a job opportunity. We're gonna learn how to format resumes for employers who use applicant tracking systems. We'll also learn how to use workintexas.com as a tool to help you build resumes. We'll also discuss how to add value to your reference lists. Now, what is the purpose of a resume? It's to get you an interview. A resume is your professional advertisement that lets employers know how you are qualified for the job you want. And it should effectively market your skills, knowledge, and accomplishments. So as you write or revise your resume, we're gonna keep some tips in mind. Because resumes are different today. In 2022, and to boost your chances of scoring an interview, you should use a two-page resume, especially if you're an experienced professional. Nowadays, recruiters prefer two-page resumes, and 77% of employers say seasoned workers should not use a single-page resume because it is seen as your personal marketing tool, and it should be tailored to the specific job and the employer's needs. You should have results-based statements as well as a list of duties that you have in your past work experiences. You know, because recruiters want to learn about you and your skills. And your resume needs to pass an applicant tracking system. Your resume needs to stand out. Did you know that based on a study done by Ladders, Inc., and it was done in 2018, but it still holds true today, it revealed that the average initial screening time for a candidate's resume clocked in at just 7.4 seconds. So it's really important to make sure that your resume is in tip top shape. So how do you get through that seven second screening? Well, you wanna make a good impression. You wanna stand out to recruiters and hiring managers. So it's important to choose simple layout with clearly marked sections and titled headers and bold job titles. You also want to provide a detailed qualification summary right at the top of your resume. This should have an overview of all of your skills and abilities. You want to avoid crammed sentences and multiple columns and make sure there's plenty of white space. You want to keep it short even if you have years of experience you don't want to exceed two pages. So when preparing to write your resume, you want to determine your focus. You, know, you don't want to write your resume until you know what type of job or jobs you're seeking. Employers rarely have the time to determine where you're going to fit in. So don't be tempted to submit a general resume with a broad overview of your employment and educational background. You want to determine what to highlight and what to leave out. And consider what the employer will want to know about your qualifications. You also want to research to find out more about the position. It's really important, no matter where you found the employment opportunity, whether it was on ZipRecruiter or other websites, you want to do lots of research. There might be some key elements that you need to include in your resume. It's also important to determine a appropriate resume format. You know, once you choose a resume format, you're going to use probably a Word document. And you want a format that's easy and quick to read, has a key information, so it's going to pass that applicant tracking system, and it also indicates that you're qualified for the job. Once you have that format, and you've created it in a Word doc, and you can update it each time you apply for different roles. You know, researching the company and the position. 
you know, no matter if you found the job on ZipRecruiter or LinkedIn Learning, maybe on Indeed or WorkInTexas.com, where can you track down other requirements? You know, these insights will help you customize your resume, make them stand out. So go directly to the company website, look at their mission statement, see what their new projects are, what are their pain points, talk how you can answer those pain points. Do internet research, look at Glassdoor, utilize that LinkedIn company information. That'll help you network. You might find somebody that already works at the company you wish to work with. And determine an appropriate resume format. We're going to look at three commonly used formats for resumes. And the first is a reverse chronological. This is one of the most common and practical resume formats. A reverse chronological resume lists your work experience and skills in reverse chronological order. You'll have your contact information, your name, your phone number, email address. Then you'll have a resume and summary qualification section. Your professional titles, they should mirror exactly the position you're looking for and your work experience. You'll have a skills section. You want to list those relevant skills that, for the position. You'll have your education and maybe optional sections like volunteering or projects or portfolio. There's some pros to the reverse chronological format when applying. Recruiters and HR managers prefer this format. It does provide an easy to read chronological history of your work experience. And it still is one of the popular resume formats in 2022. Now some drawbacks or cons. It's hard to fill in recent graduate for a recent graduate with no work experience. And it also makes career gaps obvious. So if you're a career changer, this may not be the format you want to utilize. Then there's the functional resume. It's also known as a skills-based resume. This highlights your skills and trans uh, that are transferable across industries. And it'll have your most relevant accomplishments and you can emphasize the right qualifications for the position you want. It also prioritizes the information the most important to the recruiter rather than focusing on work history that doesn't align with the job. So you'll have your contact information, resume, qualification section, your professional titles and skill summary, maybe even additional skill sets, maybe some particular piece of machinery you know how to operate or that you possess a certain certification that the employer needs to know about, work experience and education. And functional resumes have their pros. And they're good for highlighting specific skill sets. And useful if you're switching careers and also really good for recent graduates with practical skills, but maybe not too much work experience. Now some drawbacks. It's the functional format is not very popular in 2022 with most recruiters and hiring managers. But I am going to say employers are understanding the benefit of hiring individuals that do have skills and abilities. So keep that in mind. And another drawback is the applicant tracking system may have a difficulty reading a functional resume. And our last example is a combination. It's also known as a hybrid resume. It's just that, a combination of the other two formats. It focuses on both skills and your experiences. So you'll have your contact information, skills summary, additional skills, work experience, and education. As I said, it's good. This format is good for changing careers or industries, or if you haven't worked in several years, or maybe if you're even transitioning from military to civilian work. The pros, it does allow you to show off more of your experience and skills, the ones that align directly to the tasks that will be accomplished at the job. It's useful for very senior professionals or executives who need to highlight more than just work experience. Now, a drawback to a hybrid or combination format is applicant tracking systems can have difficulties reading these types of resumes. And if you're a recent graduate or don't have a lot of work experience, this may not be the format for you. Resume length. 
most resumes are two pages. A two page resume allows you to have plenty of keywords for that higher ATS score. So don't try to squeeze all the information into one page, it's not necessary. And do note that higher level executive or academics or people preparing for federal or state resumes may need more than two pages. And that's quite all right. So what is an applicant tracking system? Well, it's that artificial intelligence, that software that's used by midsize and larger companies. It helps them scan for keywords and formatting on an applicant's resume. You actually get a score, and if you score high enough, you're selected for an interview. So when you're applying online, and if you're redirected to another website, more than likely that company is using an ATS to screen its applicants. 90% of Fortune 500 companies rely on ATSs for this. But do know that companies with fewer than 50 employees are less likely to use an ATS, a tracking system. So for example, Talio is one of the most popular ATS systems used today. And Texas, the state of Texas uses Talio, Starbucks uses Talio. So if you're redirected and you see in the URL address when you're applying for a job, you see the Talio, more than likely your resume is being scanned. So here's some recommendations for an ATS. Follow the instructions carefully. Save that resume as a Word doc or an X file, however the instructions uh, tell you to do so. And use a single column format that one inch border all the way around your Word document. Avoid bullets or page numbers and spell out any acronyms. In other words, if you worked at HHS, go ahead and put Health and Human Services. Also select a sans serif font such as Arial, Calibri, Tomaha or Verdana font. These are easy for the scans to take place and they can read the formatting. But don't use lines or graphics, no borders, no shading, no headers or footers. All these can choke your document in that ATS. But do use exact wording from the job description, but don't overuse. So here's an example. If the job description states, responsible for recruiting, selecting, orienting, training, scheduling and disciplining employees, the wording on your resume could include these keywords, oversaw the recruiting, training, and disciplining of employees. This will guarantee you a high score and a possible interview. You have tools available to help you compare keywords. Workintexas.com is the website that the Texas Workforce Commission uses along with Workforce Solutions. This is where employers can post their job opportunities and job seekers can create a profile match to job opportunities, create a resume, and apply for jobs. And when you have a profile and have a resume on your workintexas.com, it compares your resume to the employer requirements. In fact, every job match you receive, you automatically get a score. And when you click on the score, it offers keywords that are related to the occupation. And it gives you different text and things that you can add to your resume to increase the score before you hit apply. There's no additional cost for using Work in Texas. Another tool that you can utilize is jobscan.co. It compares resumes and keywords against the job description. It too offers suggestions on what you can add for an ATS. Now there's a limited number of scans per month before paying a fee. And at jobscan.co, you have five free scans. So hold on to that. Just know that that's a tool that you can utilize, especially if it's a specific job you really want. You know, it's very important to compare the job description to your resume. You want to highlight key words that the employer may need to see to determine your qualifications. In fact, do that. Take the job posting, highlight or circle every ability 
or knowledge or skill set you have, that's what you're going to use to help write your resume. Also use the same job title in your qualifications headline at the top part of your resume. This will also get the attention of who's ever reading your resume. It's going to stand out to them. So note the key words in the resume that match up with a job description and make sure to add relevant skills from the job posting throughout your entire resume, even in your work history. Resume sections. These are the standard sections you're going to see in a resume. This includes your heading, your contact information, your qualifications section, key skills, your work experience. You might even have an accomplishments section or awards and education. The heading. Did you know an unprofessional email address is a major problem for 35% of employers? You know, first impressions really do matter. So consider a setting up a professional email that you can utilize for all of your work search activities. And in your heading on your resume, it is recommended to include your city, state, and zip code, but it's not necessary. And do make sure your contact information is up to date. You also want to make sure your email address and voice message are set up and professional. And in your email signature, when you're sending correspondences, go ahead and set up your email uh, signature block. Have your first and last name, maybe your phone number. Go ahead and type your email again, and maybe even add your LinkedIn URL. And on your heading of your resume, if you're including a LinkedIn URL, make sure it's up to date and it reflects your recent work activity. The qualification or professional summary. This is where you want to state what you can bring to the position. You know, the, the way you format your resume, resume can influence greatly how recruiters and hiring managers digest your accomplishments, your work history, and your qualifications. So you want to grab the attention of that recipient in just a few seconds. So the most important information is at the top, and that's the qualification section. So list that information right there. Add computer software, hardware, and technical skills that match up with the job. Maybe accomplishments and personal contributions include related work experience for sure. So here's a sample of a qualification summary. It's for project manager. They've stated project manager qualification. Results driven healthcare project manager with a project management professional certification and 10 years experience managing multiple projects simultaneously in high volume hospitals. Experienced in developing and participating in performance and improvement reports on a quarterly and monthly basis for multiple hospital departments. Reduced cost 32% in six months through a hospital wide initiative project that cut stock room waste. Highly proficient public speaking skills that include an appearance at the 2020 Change Management Conference in Inaham, California. Here's another sample. This is for software developer summary. Strategic planning, object oriented programming, cross platform software. Innovative, dynamic, and resourceful software developer with a proficiency to develop simple software solutions using Java, Agile, SDLC, and MySQL. Dedicated to creatively streaming processes and managing project priorities and efficiently solving technical issues. Expertise in debugging, front end development, and interpersonal communication and team building. and your work experience and relative key skills. You know, in general, most employers pay close attention to work history from the past decade or so. So a general rule of thumb is to use your past 10 to 15 years of work history. And if you've got a lengthy work history that spans more than 20 years, use your best judgment on what to include. Also begin statements with action verbs because you wanna provide impactful descriptive statements of your abilities. 
Be careful about using jargon or acronyms, spell things out, and list employment history in the reverse chronological order for the past 10 years. Also list the company name that it was known when you worked there, even if the business is closed currently. Include city and state where you were based and use month and year that you started and ended the job. You could also use just years to maybe help downplay small gaps in work history. And do add achievements and awards where applicable. So writing impactful statements. Today's resumes need to have impactful statements with action verbs rather than a vague list of your previous job duties. You know, effective utilization of action verbs in a resume would really be an advantage for you when compared to your competition. And it becomes easy to customize your specifics and contributions in an easy to read manner, therefore creating a positive impact and hopefully getting chosen for an interview. So someone has written, duties include in-house training. Well, you might want a better, exp uh, better way to say that might be conducted week-long computer training sessions for all new employees. Someone has written increased sales. You might want to write increased sales within the technology department by 25% between quarter two and quarter four of 2019 resulting in an increased profit margin for the company. You know, action verb is a word that expresses physical or mental action. And these words and resumes present responsibilities, achievements, and make the sentence complete in a very effective manner. So if you managed a team, instead of reciting your management duties like led a team or managed employees, show what an inspirational leader you were. Maybe consider using terms such as aligned, cultivated, directed, enabled, or facilitated. And if you supported customers, because manning the phones or answering questions really means you're advising customers and meeting their needs. So use advised, advocated, arbitrated, coached, or consulted. And if you led a project, if you were in charge from initiative from start to finish, maybe skip led and try these words instead. Chaired, controlled, coordinated, executed. So here's a work history example. This individual has their job title listed first, digital marketing manager, the company where they worked, the month and year they started and ended their employment. And then they have some impactful statements, created a new format for reporting and presenting the sales, customer engagement, and Google AdWord reports that shortened the meetings by 30%, updated and monitored the bid strategy and Google AdWord campaigns, and increased the CTR, click-through rate, by 4% within the first month, successfully established community engagement through content marketing, which resulted in a quick growth with a 35% engagement rate. Located and proposed new potential business deals, B2B, by conducting, contacting potential partners. You know, a quick tip, it's really effective to add the job title first of your previous roles, if they're the same title as the job you're looking for. And oftentimes, this keeps the hiring manager engaged as they're moving through their five to six second resume scan. And accomplishments and results. You know, the best resumes include quantitative information and specific examples or descriptions of a result or accomplishment. So think about the following when you're writing your resume. It could be, did you advance or assume additional responsibilities? Talk about them. Did you help your company save or make money? Mention that. Did you increase sales? Did you train anyone or develop training materials? Did you introduce a new or more effective technique that improved processes? Did you launch a new program or product? Did you generate new business or add new clients or forge affiliations with new organizations? Sometimes we just need to take a good look at 
all of the responsibilities that we've done in our past work experiences and sort of break them down, the skill sets, and sort of remember all of your success stories that you've had in your previous work. That's what you want to bring to the forefront on your resume. And awards and recognition. You know, if you have a special awards or recognition, maybe consider setting up a separate section. Draw some attention to those honors, especially if you think they're relevant to the job search. Maybe place this section, move it up higher, right underneath the qualification summary of your resume rather than burying it at the end. So this individual has a couple of awards. And they have top salesperson in January 2021, honored with the Triple, Cr Triple Crown Award. They were the recipient of the PMI Fellow Award in 2020, recognizing the service to the organization and the team at ABC Company. Also Employee of the Month in March and September of 2021 within the IT department for ABC Company. Again, this is an optional section and only add if it's gonna be relevant to the job you're applying to. Education and training. This section includes schools that you've attended, degrees you've attained, and other relevant details. You know, list the most recent education first, and recent graduates could add a high grade point average. So omit dates that are more than 20 years old, and always include your high school or GED if that's your highest level of education. So let's take a look at a few examples. Someone has a Bachelor of Business Administration at St. Edwards University, Austin, Texas. Someone has listed Project Management Process Groups, Certificate Courses 2021, the Academy. Someone is fixing to graduate and they've listed Concordia University, Austin, Texas, completed 32 credits and 16 credits in Healthcare Administration. Our last example, Bastrop High School, Bastrop, Texas, graduated 2016. Optional information. Did you know, according to a survey conducted by LinkedIn, 41% of employers find volunteer work as valuable as paid work? So consider adding a separate section always to enhance your resume of your volunteer activities, maybe your professional associations or other organizations. And a quick tip, make sure to include activities that enhance your resume and don't detract. Be careful about mentioning organizations that are politically or religiously affiliated. You want to avoid bias on the part of the employer. Again, only add the information if it's relevant to the opportunities you're seeking. We've talked a little bit about workintexas.com, that website, if you can look for employment opportunities. Well, the website has a resume builder. It's a tool that's built in right to your profile. You have the ability to store multiple copies of your resume. You might wanna have a specific resume for a different occupation, maybe one for project manager. Another one might be quality assurance inspector. You know, you have the option to upload or you can even create a resume using the system generated template. And it'll also walk you through a wizard to help you ensure that all of your sections are filled out. You also have access to occupational descriptions. In other words, you could put in a job title that'll give you tasks and descriptives of that occupation. That'll help you wordsmith your resume. It's really easy to download a completed resume from your Work in Texas profile as well. There's no cost to utilize Work in Texas. And reference lists. You know, it's really important when you're looking for employment to reach out to individuals and ask them to be on your reference list. You wanna prepare at least four to five references individuals who are familiar with your work and can vouch for your character. Send them a resume. Let them know what occupation you're seeking. That way they can speak highly of your abilities. You know, most employers won't need references until after a job interview. However, when you're applying for employment and you're on a website, sometimes it wants you to upload your resume. It'll autofill in the uh, website, the application. 
and it may ask for your references. So best bet is to go ahead and, and get those individuals lined up. Let's see, here's some, an example of what you'll need to include when you're creating your reference list. The individual has their name and their job title, business listed where they work, and the address, as well as their phone number, and maybe even a time to call them, 7.30 to 4.30. This individual has even added a sentence of how the individual is familiar with them. They're, they know their training ability and good work habits. Do note, when you're creating resumes, do not put at the bottom references available upon request. In doing so, you're dating yourself. It's outdated to do that. It's not necessary. So here's 10 key points to remember when creating effective resumes. Always tailor that resume. Focus on the specific occupation for each resume you submit to each opportunity, because it's important for you to customize your resume for each employer. Select a res resume format that's easy to read and one that showcases your abilities. And don't forget to write clear, concise statements about your knowledge, your expertise. Include a qualification summary right at the top with keywords from the job description and limit your resume to two pages. Begin those statements with action verbs and add details where appropriate and accomplishments as well. Don't forget, always list the important information at the top part of that resume. You want to get them right at the beginning and always proofread your resume. I do want to thank you for spending some time with me for this workshop. Do know that Workforce Solutions Rural Capital Area our offices are open and we have staff here to assist you. We even have our own mobile web app. The Q QR code is here and you can take a screenshot of it. And this will give you access to our Jobs Now portal, also our workshop calendar. We offer all types of workshop topics, everything from how to rock your LinkedIn profile, uh, getting ready for the interview, choosing a career path. All of our offices are open and you can check us out at www.workforcesolutionsrca.com. There you'll find a listing of all of our services and events to help you find your next employment opportunity. Again, this is Leslie Stearns and thank you for joining me.